I'm on this page and this is my edit page pack. I thought I would show you guys what it looked like if you guys bought it. I'm just going to showcase all the controls, how they work, giving you a preview, seeing if it's worth you guys to buy it. I think it will for sure as it gives you the ability to edit all those effects that you usually do in Fusion. It gives you access to that in the edit page, increasing your workflow for AMV editing. All right, in the pack, you're going to get a DRFX file. You're going to get a .drb file, which has the effects for it, the power bin over here. And then you have the files over here. If we just go in and look, we are, have all the nodes here and you can install those into your macro folder if you want. In this video, I'll show you how to install it in your macro folder if you are interested in doing that. Otherwise, here it is. And let's install it by just double clicking this DRFX file. I already have it installed, but when you do that, it should look like this. And then it should install everything into your effects library. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our bin. And so we can just drag this bin over here. And then we could drag this into our power bins if we want. But I'm just going to keep it here for now. And so I'm just going to show you guys how we're going to use this. All right. The first thing we're going to do, let's open up our effects library and see all the effects that we have. Let's go to effects. And then we're going to go toolbox. We're going to go to effects. Go down to page ENT and then to the edit page pack. And then over here, we have all of our effects that are in this pack over here. Some are very simple and some I put together are very more complex. And so I'm going to show you guys how to do all that. The way that the pack works is that they are edit page effects. So we can bring this out and then drag this onto our clip or adjustment clip, whatever we are using. And that's how we use it. And then we will get our controls up in the inspector over here to the effects. And it'll show us all the controls that we have over here, mainly the fusion controls that we have access to from the edit page. And so first we have all these tabs and then we have this frame. So I'm going to go over all the controls first for the Twix because it's kind of important. So first we have the frame gap. Let me just turn this off real quick. And that depends on how many frames we have or how many dead frames we have on our scene. So right now I took this, so or I got cut out all the dead frames. And so every single frame is a new frame. Let's say if we had like some stuttering and say like every three frames, Frames, there's a new frame then i would put that up to three or if there's every two frames i put that up to two and that's basically what i would do for that effect uh, to have our effects to start working on our clips we need to make sure that our cache is on so we need to go up to playback go down to render cache and make sure that's on smarter user i usually have it on smarter user if you have it on user you need to make sure in your project settings go down here where the cogwheel is you need to go over to the master settings scroll down and make sure that your your cache transitions and cache composites and cache shoot effects in user mode are turned on and then make sure that's there and then lastly, what we're going to do, we're going to go down to the clip, right click it, and then go up to render cache fusion effect filter and turn that on. Now we have our effect here and we go up to the effect and then we have our source time. It shows you what time we are seeing at certain times. So right now we're looking at frame 12, back here we're looking at frame 10, frame 6, and that is all dependent on this graph that we have over here, which is an anim curves graph that's connected to our source time. So please don't double click the source time or it'll get rid of that control and that link. So this graph over here controls the time. And so we do like something like this and just change this to something like that. So now we can see our frames goes fast to slow and to fast again at the very end and that's the way that that graph works or we could change it back to where it was before where it starts out fast and then it goes slow for the rest of the clip right here you can see that the starting value is 24 frames but right now if we go inside this clip and see this clip is actually 47 frames long how do i know that i, I well, I calculated it before and uh, that's why I put the number over there. You can check how many frames you have. I go inside my clip and I see how long the Twix is over here. I have about 201 and so I can put 201 into this calculator thing that we have. So if I actually go to frames and over here I can have a calculator. So it's about two seconds. Right, two seconds and one frame. Two seconds and one frame. Two seconds, one frame. That gives us a value of 49 actually. So we can put this value to 49 and that should be able to give us the value at the end where we have we're using all the frames here for our Twix. And then we can actually use our Twix settings over here. So let's change this from blend flow and turn on our optical flow to make sure that our flow works. Save that. Then we have this cache out. And now we have our Twix from the edit page looking good right there. And then we can switch it up if you want. And you know, I still haven't gone to the fusion page at all. All the settings are here and available just like that. And sometimes you have a little glitch sometimes like that. And that's just some sort of quirk for some reason with even using the edit page effects. And so you just disable the clip a bunch of times hitting D on your keyboard and selecting clip. And sometimes that will get rid of the glitch. If not, you will have to shorten the clip down to wherever that glitch is. You get rid of that cache and then bring that back over here. And then we will have supposedly better playback. Let's see. And maybe that frame will be resolved. And it looks like it has been. All right, there we go. And then now let's just do it for the, really quick for the second clip. Let's do it. Twix, EP, let's go up here. Make sure it's going to our ending frame, which is 26. And our starting frame is going to be at zero. And we'll have our graph like that. Let's turn on flow and optical flow. And yeah, that should be it. Oh, right click it over here. Render cache at Twix, EP. Just like that. Have it cache. And we should be good.
Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And now we can use our other effects. I would take them from here and then apply them on adjustment clips. I'll show you to do that. Just do this and then apply it to adjustment clip, like say this twitch shake, maybe something like that. But I just have it preset in the media pool over here with our bin that has all our effects that we want. So first let's do our transitions. So I have one that's transition end and then I have one that's transition start. They're both different lengths. And so transition start is the start of the transition. So it'll be like this and see how we are zooming out. The transition end is the end portion of the transition. So end portion from the cut that we have. So now we can see we have a little preset transition just like that. That's very nice. And the reason that I have it five frames at the beginning here is because it uses anim curves on duration. So if I wanted to have this start like very much longer, something like this, then I could do that and be much smoother. But I like having it a little bit fast, just like that. And it gives us a little bit better motion in my opinion. So let's do it from that. And with this, it's similar to the presets that we had in the previous peach pack, but a lot better because now everything's accessible from the edit page as you can see over here. And also has the same controls with the versions. So right now we have our zoom out with the version one. We go to version two and change that on both of our controls. Then we have a zoom in and then we just you see, so that's zoom out, zoom in, and then the third version is slide right, slide left, slide up, slide down. And that is our presets that we have over here. And, and you just change it to whatever, whichever one you want, and then you have the motion that you would like. One thing that I didn't mention is if you switch tabs, that your graph goes away. But if you just zoom in by holding down control and scrolling, and then bring it back, then your graph will show up again. So don't panic if that you don't see that. That's the easy solution to fix that real quick. So I'm just going to do this. And it's generally, when there's edit page effects on here, you don't want to copy and paste these effects generally when you have edit page effects for some reason you don't want to like alt duplicate it kind of like messes them up for some reason i don't know why they need to fix that but i'm just going to drag this down hit control c and bring this back over here hit control v and then we paste it just like that and then same thing for over here one two three four five and then now we have our transitions just like this and then to spice it up let's just do a zoom in on this one so two and then let's put this one to two as well and so now we have that zoom in zoom out all right that's looking pretty good to me now let's add a shake so now let's go over here we have a shake and i'm going to do one shake one regular shake and then we have the twitch shake over here so let's do the shake bring this in put this on our clip and now we can see we have a nice little preset shake that i have over here if you want to adjust these settings you go over to user and then you have all of your controls over here that you usually have on your anim curves for controls and so if you want to increase the strength of say the x value you have to go to the x range and that's where you'll be able to adjust that value over here but i don't like using the x so i usually put that at zero you have your y strength at the range and then if you want to have the y be normal you have to have it at the stretch at one and that's for all the stretches that will be the original anim curve but i like to stretch mine out so that means i put it as a lower number between zero and one and that'll give me that nicer little bob that i would like and then lastly we have the offset this allows us to start the animation earlier on the graph if we go into the negatives or delay it if we go into the positives but yeah that is mainly the controls that you have for the shake and i just keep it at that or just play around with the values and you'll kind of get used to the controls as long as you know how to use the anim curves all right let's add the twitch shake so it should be much easier to understand and so this one yeah something like that much faster it gives a different vibe and you have let's click it over here and you have all your controls that you need if you want to reseed and just give it a different twitch you can reseed the x reseed the y and you also have your scale also if you, this shows up where you don't have your background you go over to the transform and then change your edges to reflect and then now you have your nice shake just like that and then if you want to change the intensity of our shake so let's say we want to make this the x stronger we can go up to one and now it's going to shake a lot more left and right i just keep it more towards the 0.5 because i like more of a stronger y shake than an x shake but yeah that is mainly your controls here and then you can see your other controls here if you want to mess with those x and y parameters for your twitch shake next let's add our blurs and our exposure bring this down so the focus over here copy it Pace. Now we have our all of our defocus controls. You can change the focus size, but let's change it right now. You do the 12. I'll just increase the graph like that. I'm going to put it down to 10. This whole graph will be based off the value of 10, but you give it gets your little blur just like that. A nice addition having all the controls on the edit page just like this. And yeah, you can change your shape, lens size, and all. You can also change your gamma. And now let's go and add the exposure on top. Control C, Control V over here. And you can either expose the highlights or the brightness. I usually do highlights but sometimes I switch it up to brightness and you also change the graph to like that as well. And let's actually, let's change this from brightness so you can see that. And yeah, if you want to adjust how long the animation is, you just drag out the adjustment clip. Now that exposure will go however long this is, especially if we just change the graph, something like that. And now you can see it happening longer instead of this little quick 
one over here. But yeah, that's the great part about having anim curves on our edit page controls is that now the beginning keyframe and the last keyframe are controlled by the length of the adjustment clip. And so we just have to adjust this all again in the edit page. All right, now let's go to our directional blurs. Bring this down over here. This is gonna be two frames. Let's bring this over. This is gonna be a zoom out. So let's go over here. I have already have it on the zoom out settings like that. And let's just bring this one over here as well. Control C, Control V. I just need the first frame over here. So let's shorten that and then change that to this one. Control C, Control V, this one at the end. Do that again. All right. So now we have that looking good. Let's say we want to have a little bit of a dent on our zoom out. We could go over here and grab this dent one, bring that here. All right, there we go. There's our setting. But yeah, now we have our zoom out on our dent like that. So it just gives us a little bit more control. And I think that's all of them except the transform. I'll show you the transform over here, not on this the same one that we have over here. But yeah, let's bring this out. And so now we have something like this. And this is kind of where I have it set right now to have it do a fake zoom for the preset that we have inside the bin. But I really like the way that this transform works. And so let's actually get rid of what's on here right now. And then let's actually pull one straight from the effects library. The transform, bring that on there, put that on there. All right, so how does this work? So right now we have the starting value and the animation scale. So whatever the starting value is at, it's gonna be the value of your control. You can see these the values of the controls here. You need to understand that you know the normal x, y is at x. And if, we have, if you move it over, that you can see it moves over like that. And then we have the zoom always starts at one and then we have the rotate always starts at zero. Then we have a motion blur or whatever like that. But none of these are keyframe right now, but we do have this animation going. So let's say we want to zoom in. What we need to do is go to our zoom. You need to right click it. You need to go down to connect to and then click me and then animation value. So now this value is keyframed using this graph that is in the edit page right here. So now if we play this back, you can see it zooms in pretty far like that. We just need to adjust our animation value. So say we want this to have it zoom in like that and then zooms in and then zooms it again or waits until and then zooms it again we can have it where it puts this value to 0 0.2 so first it's starting at a value of one and then it's adding 0.2 at the end of the value where the keyframe is at the top over here so you probably won't be able to see this animation very well but it does that little zoom in like that let's do a different graph let's have it start at the beginning just like this have a little zoom in that looks pretty good a little quick uh, let's change this value maybe try a 0.4 so now we have it zoom in and then now it stays there but now we can also adjust the keyframes if you want as well so let's bring this over highlight that and then we can move this in so it's like that so i just stop in the middle and then let me just bring make another keyframe over here bring this down have this at zero so let's bring that out it's our y to zero and then put our one that and then let's adjust our value so it goes up like this and then we can control our curve like that so now we have it zooming in and then we can zoom it out but if you want to see it better you can actually make it this curve like this let's see and zoom out so it's probably better for a longer clip but as you can see we are able to control this whatever we want say we want to do this value for the x instead and so what we do we go over the control that we want to change it on we need to right click it go down to connect to click me and the animation value again and then we could remove this from the zoom right click it and it's put remove publish and now that value won't be affected and then we can put that back to normal and then so now we have, still have our value saved over here let's actually put it to a value where it's normal so put that to zero put that to four and so it's going to start at zero go and then move back just like that and yeah we just have our little edit page control we can control our values here from our inspector with this little graph over here and we did not go in the shooting page at all and yeah this is just something i've been working on really proud of it hopefully if you get it it helps your workflow out a bunch if you're interested in getting this pack you get the pack now at pgent.com or at the fourth wall link if that link does not work thank you for watching and happy editing